Hello, this is Deepa, and I'm the Creative Mystic. I ring this bell to awaken you to the divine presence that's within you, saying, Hello, God. Hello, Spirit. So, today I'm here to share with you、um, about how to,、uh, how to shift negative thoughts, ne- how to shift from negative thinking to positive thinking. Don't know why I couldn't spit that out, but I couldn't.、Um, But I really felt divinely guided to share this with you today, you know, because I think it's a challenge everybody has. And the first thing to make that shift is what? You have to become aware that you're in negative thinking. And you might think, well, that is easy, but it's not. You know, a lot of people who have negative thinking don't think they're negative, don't even realize they are negative. So I want to point out. Some of the things so you can start to know when you're in negative thinking. You might think you already know them, but a lot of times just hearing them makes you more aware. You know, so、um, if you're complaining, right, you complain about something happened to you that was terrible, that was hard, that, oh, you're mad at this person because they did something that frustrated you, that's negative thinking. Now, I'm not telling you that, that you have to stop, but it is negative thinking. It, you know, one of the things you know that is negative thinking is talking about what you don't want rather than what you want, which is a programming that I see that people have. I have it. I've had to really work on changing it. It still can come up for me. And I, you know, like if I'm really tired and not slept well, I'll talk about what I don't want. What I don't want is blah, blah, blah. That's negative thinking because it's showing the lack. You know, negative thinking, a lot of people think it is, you know,、um, negative and positive is good and bad. And I don't really like to look at it that way. I like to look at it as when you get caught in negative thinking, you're focused on the lack, you're focused on what you don't have, you're focused on what's not working, you're focused on like you're stuck, you're, it's gonna, you know, you're gonna stay here because. As spiritual beings, because if you're listening to this, I know you're, you know, my creative mystic friend. You have the desire to grow spiritually, to use your creativity, you know. And if you want to grow spiritually, if you want to grow in any area of your life, you have to be on the expansive side, right? Not the contractive side. So, what people call negative thinking is on the contractive side. And I got this.、Um, I saw this at a spiritual metaphysical bookstore and I just loved it because when you look at it, it's beautiful, but not just beautiful. See how it looks like the、um, crystals are going up and down on the wire and then the cylinder. And you might be going, yeah, now, now I know some of you are just listening to this and you can't see it, but you, maybe you've seen them where they have a crystal and then they have this spiral.、Um, Spiral metal twist that it goes kind of up and down in. But in actuality, it's not really going up and down in it. It just looks like it's an illusion. And this is the illusion that happens when we're in negative thinking, when we're in contractive thinking. Because I, like I said, I like to call it contractive more than negative.、Um, but people recognize it more if you say negative. Is that you kind of go round and round and round, but you're not getting anywhere. And that's what this little. Beautiful, you know, I don't know,、um, device, I don't know, piece of art. It's, it's art to me in a way. Someone created and thought about it. And I just thought, wow, it really represents how we can get caught in going around and around and around. And when we're in what people call negative thinking, what I call contractive thinking, that's kind of what's happening. It was going around and around and around, and we really aren't going anywhere. We think we are, but we're not. You know, and that's what I was on this looking at going, yeah, it looks like we're going somewhere. It looks like this thing's moving up and down, but it's really not. So,、um, you know, it's, that's what happens when we get into complaining. You know, we think this is going to make us feel better because we need to voice it and express our feelings. And expression is important. But usually, have you seen yourself? You, you complain to one person, then you complain to a friend, and then you complain to another friend, and then you complain to a co worker, and then you complain, right? And you've shared over and over and over. And what is that putting your energy towards? It's putting your energy towards 
something you don't really want, right? You don't want more incidences in your life that create more things to complain about. And that's what happens. So you don't want to stuff what you're feeling, but what you want to do is start to shift and start to understand why is this thing bothering me so much? Because I find when I can understand why it's bothering me, what and when I say why, I mean like what emotional wound is it pushing on? What, you know, belief system is it pushing against? That's causing me to, you know, like if somebody mistreats me in a store and I needed to feel the need to go tell somebody, it's because I feel like they mistreated me and it's pushing on my not good enough. And I want to be, you know, um, um, I want to be like treated in a way that affirms I'm good enough, you know, and because I, you know, if there's parts of me that don't feel good enough, I might complain about it. Like, look, because I want people to get on board and tell me, oh yeah, the thing they did is mistreatment. Now I've really work on doing, not doing that now. But like I said, if I feel tired, you know, I don't know about you, but I know whenever we feel tired, hungry, frustrated, angry, the subconscious mind, those, those little wounds and habits can just grab hold, you know, and so you have to become aware of the things that are actually contractive energy that can pull you into things you don't want. And so when you become aware, that's the first step to be able to shift to what we would call positive, expansive thinking. All right, is awareness. Awareness, number one. It's one of the reasons why I recommend people meditate is because it raises your level of awareness. One of the things you can practice if you're not a meditator, but maybe you do chanting or maybe you just have struggled with doing a consistent meditation practice is just to practice the power of the pause. You know, I talk about that, like breathe, you know, take a breath, pause before you say anything, pause before you open your mouth. There's wonders for me when I do it. You know, that's the thing is we're all a work in progress. You know, it's not like you have instantaneous change. It's like, You practice, some days you do well, some days you don't, you know, and that's okay. So you want to just really start to understand that, okay, my first thing I need to do is practice awareness to change my contractive thinking to expansive thinking. Awareness that I'm on the contractive side, I'm on the negative side, right? And okay, what can I do to shift to the positive side? That first part is understanding because you, you know, a lot of times people will beat themselves up like, why can't I be more positive or why can't I be more expansive? Because you don't understand why you're doing it in the first place. So when you understand like what's being pushed on, the wound or, you know, the belief system that maybe what they're doing says that you're not a good person and you don't want to believe that. So you push it away and you get angry, you know, but when you can actually start to like, go, okay, that's what's being pushed on. And you take that part of you that feels wounded, you know, whether it's your little kid, you know, little girl, little boy, or your teenager, you know, it's a lot of times the teenagers, the ones that's frustrated. And, you know, you have to make friends with all those parts of you. It's one of the things I work on with my coaching clients is I tell people, this is not therapy, but there's a healing component because the part that's healing, that really needs to happen is that we need to love and accept all of us. And most of us don't. And when people say they don't have any self hatred or dislike for themselves, um, unless they're self realized, I know that's not true. At some level, everyone's different degrees, we have some dislike or self hatred for ourselves. I would have told you when I was younger, in my 20s, I didn't have that. Um, I knew there were things that may, I wouldn't, I would have said, I don't have self-hatred. I would have said, I just have some areas that I you know, wish I was better. And when I really started to understand what was going, driving some of my behaviors, I realized I did have some, I still have some, I have to like, it's like by far less, you know, I love myself more than I ever have, but it's a work in progress, you know? And it's like, how can you start to be in that work in progress? Because when you start to accept yourself and go, okay, what's really going on here? Then you can have the shift to positive thinking. Anytime you try to do that before you have an understanding of what's driving your behavior, you will struggle. 
you might be able to maintain it for a little bit and then you're going to go back and then you're going to go what's wrong why can't i do this what's wrong with me what's the you know what, what you know, they talk about this why can't i do it easily it's not because something's wrong with you it's because the programming you have there are these emotional wounds or beliefs that you have that are driving behaviors that your little girl your teenager or something wants to keep you doing something because it makes them feel safe makes them feel powerful makes them feel secure something okay it's different for everybody that's one of the things about when i work with my clients is that my spirit guides kind of help zero in on the very thing that's kind of catching you um because that's the thing that will keep you stuck that will keep you in this see this little like i said where it feels like you're going you know making progress but there's a, an illusion that you're really not and that's what i love about this little spiritual piece of art is that the crystals are look like they're moving and it's a reminder that yes i don't want to be like looking like i'm moving and not being really i want to have that growth and expansive nature so i know some of you are not watching this and you, and you can't see it but just think about that when you go around and around and around and you think you're making progress but then you realize i haven't really made a whole lot of progress you know i haven't really moved forward that's okay it's part of the human condition all right so that awareness, that ability, then you got to check in. You got to be aware that you're into the contractive side. Then you got to sit with yourself and check in about what's really driving you, what's going on, what's being pushed on. Okay. Now, for most people, they have challenges doing that on their own. So I suggest getting support. What kind of support depends on where you are. Okay. It could be you need therapy if you have some extreme traumas. Could be you need a coach that understands this. Okay. Um, but if you're not ready to get support from another person, I tell people at least go journal. In fact, you know, when I work with my clients, I have them journal. Doesn't mean I don't give them insights and stuff because I do. But the big goal here ultimately is that I help you to have the ahas yourself, that I help you to start to put in place and change the programming that's kept you going around in this, you know, delusion, illusion that you're moving when you're not, that you're making progress when you're not, that, you know, that you're, that being contractive is going to get you the expansive thing you want, which it won't. And that's why it's so important to shift from that negative, what they call negative thinking, what I call contractive to the expansive, the positive, because it's the expansive thinking, the possibility that, you know, there's, ah, oh, yes, this is possible. Yes, how is this working for me? That it's, you know, that it can, it's gonna help me grow and step into this next stage, this next level that I desire, that is gonna really make a difference. And, you know, a lot of people think that, if I just do affirmations enough, I'll be positive and I won't have these thoughts anymore. And I say, yeah, you have to get in touch with yourself and make friends with yourself. That's the key. You know, I tried using willpower many years ago when I was young and it did get me some success. But I saw I would still fall into it constantly because something would trigger me. Something would cause me to, you know, um, would push on that wound or that belief system that would make me react rather than respond. You know what that is, right? And so obviously whenever you're reacting, that's on the contractive side. Because when you think about it, the reason you're reacting is you're reacting to an emotional wound or belief system from the past. And that's why there's such a like huge reaction because something hurt you, something harmed you, something gave you trauma from the past that needs to be healed so you can move to the present moment because it's in the present moment we have the power, you know? So part of getting into positive thinking is being in the present moment. That's the third thing. So the first two, okay, awareness, two, check in with yourself, three, be in the present moment, okay? Because in the present moment, if you're in the present moment, okay, and you not you won't have to complain about that past thing that happened because in the present moment, right now where you are, it's fine, right? Like if you're worrying about the future, about money, about will you have enough, or you look at right now, you know, 
even if like you say, yeah, but right now I don't have enough money to pay the bill or I don't have enough to da 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 okay? You go, oh, but right now I'm fine. What positive thing, what good cause can I make that will possibly bring me the money I need or will possibly bring me the results I desire? But it's about in that moment, okay? So if you can look at the moment and let go you know, of the judgment, I just did a live with um, Mother of Joy about how she really talked about how you had to stand in your power to be in your joy. You know, and that's when you're in your joy, you're going to be in the positive, expansive thinking. So you bring your energy to the moment and you let go of your judgment of yourself, because that's a lot of times why people feel bad. They're judging themselves like, why can't I do better? Why am I not good enough? What's wrong with me? Oh, that was stupid. Something, okay? Or, or they're judging another person. Ah, they did this thing to me. They're this kind of person. I don't like them. Nah, 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 okay? Or the situation. Oh, I needed that money to show up today, or I wanted it today, or this doesn't show up the way I wanted it. You know, I wanted it to be the this to be showing up at three o'clock today, or you know, when someone has a goal or something, or they need someone to help, or someone didn't show up at the time that they were supposed to show up, or they're late to your appointment. It can put you into frustration, right? And that's not that's judging the situation, judging that you know better than what Divine Mother knows of what's going to work for you. And when I'm actually in that place, because one of the places I can get probably the most frustration, I don't know about you, I'd love to see you share, like, where's the place that you can judge the situation the most? Or which one do you have the biggest challenge with judging yourself, others or the situation? Um, you know, mine depends on the day. <laughs> but the judging the situation, you know, I can judge it sometimes where ah, this person's late, my man, and in my mind, you know, and then I can go, oh, wait a minute, everything's happening for me. Everything's happening for the betterment of my life. And um, when I was in sales, when I would always say that everything's happening for the betterment of my life, I can remember the first time where I really saw like, oh, yes, this is really true. Is I was in the car driving to a, a sales appointment. I was late and then there was traffic. You know, I was like already gonna be five or 10 minutes late, which wasn't too bad, but then there was a car accident. And I was like, Argh. you know, like this is like, Argh. you know, like I'm like bugged. But I just said, oh, no, everything's happening for the betterment of my life. And I kept saying that everything's happening for the betterment of my life. Everything's happening for the betterment of my life. I get there and find out, this was many years ago before, you know, cell phones were all over the place. This is, um, I get there and find out that, oh, the person is late themselves. The receptionist said, oh, they're, they'll be here in about five or 10 minutes. They said, they're really sorry. They, they, they ended up having some kind of thing that happened at home and they had to take care of it. I was like, oh, okay. And that's when I realized like, yeah, you just gotta keep holding that. You keep holding this, everything's happening for the betterment and you'll see the betterment. And so when I can keep saying that and remembering it, that brings me to the positive, to the expansive side of thinking. So that's what I'm gonna recommend. You bring in some form of that saying. It could be everything is happening for me. Everything is happening for the betterment of my life. Sometimes I'll say, okay, Mother Mary, Divine Mother, this is in your hands and I know you've got my back. Everything's happening for the betterment. And so, you know, I'd use any one of those three. I'd love to hear which one resonates with you or what you say, because, you know, it makes a huge difference that you, when you feel like the divine has your back, you don't feel so much lack. You don't feel so much need to complain. You know, when you go up, oh. you know, on the times I feel like, yeah, Mother Mary's got my back everything's cool. Even though it's not something that I like or that it went my way. I'm like, it's okay. It's got my back. I know something good's coming out of it. I may not know how or when, but I know it's coming. And so that's, you know, really how you start to shift is that awareness that checking in with yourself, you know, um, that everything's been for your life making sure you connect with spirit because spirit is really here. Their grace is with us. Whatever you believe in your higher power, 
divine grace is with you. And when you can feel connected and cared for, you're on that positive side of the equation of not, you don't need to complain when you know divine mother's got your back. You know, you don't need to worry when you know, like it's taken care of, she's got your back. All right. So, you know, I hope this helps you. I was really divinely guided to talk about this today. Um, if you resonate with this, please subscribe or share this with somebody who would benefit from it. Uh, you know, my whole um, purpose is to put blessings in the world that really help you step into your power, to help you get in touch with your heart's desire, you know, and um, would love to hear any comments and shares. All right. Have a miraculous day. And remember, greatness is within you. It's time to let it out. And remember, it's your heart's desire that's your greatness. Blessings.